For this video, I will be using the MD613 IOL, the ANBFH 1.8% viscoelastic, the Anvision IOL holding forceps, and the new Viscoject Easy injector. Before I begin, I would like to point out the differences in design of the old Naviject injector and the new Viscoject Easy. As you can see, they are the same design. The only difference between these two injectors is the Viscoject Easy comes with a loading block. And the purpose of the loading block is to prevent dropping an IOL during the loading process in surgery. Now, when we are loading an IOL into the Viscoject Easy, one thing we want to remember is in the loading chamber, there are grooves set in the base. These grooves are to hold the IOL in place as we close the flaps, so the IOL doesn't float up and become trapped between the two flaps and rip as we inject it in the eye. So our first step, we are going to place a small line of viscoelastic in the bed of the loading chamber. Just enough to lubricate and not enough to have the eye wheel want to float up. As I said, I will be using an MD613. So when you pull it out of its holding, you want to grab it in the middle, pull it directly out, and place that IOL right in the center of that loading bed. We do not want to close our forceps and push in the middle. That will cause the sides of the IOL to fold up and become caught. So we're actually going to keep our forceps open and only push on the edges as we slowly close. At this point, we're able to close our forceps and gently tap the edges of the eye well, sliding down that plastic, making sure those haptics are trapped in the grooves that I mentioned and pointed out earlier. You can close those flaps, remove the loading chamber from the loading block, and we want to look to see if we can see any eye well. It looks like we are good to go. And then we take the injector, insert the head by sliding it in, and then we want to make sure we push it all the way forward. We're going to fill the front and back end with viscoelastic. As we push this plunger into the loading chamber, we want to make sure that goes in straight. Sometimes it can be angled, but if it goes in straight, there's a less chance for it to catch a haptic of the IOL. Now we're going to push that IOL into the loading into the loading tube, this front part, until it's about halfway into that tube. And as you can see, you can see it entering. At this point, if we pull back that plunger just a little bit, it will release any haptics that might be trapped, preventing any complications as it goes into the eye. And if we do all these nice little tips, once the injector is in the eye, that IOL will come out perfectly easily into the anterior chamber.